and one look at Vinny, I passed out. He was wrapped like a mummy. His right eye was half open. Despite his condition, the officials are anxious to get Vinny back to jail. He was talking very low in a whisper and said, they're sending me back. I said, how can they send you back if the same people there that are trying to kill you? Incensed, Gina springs into action. I called up a local radio station until I got a woman that was an actual disc jockey. The publicity works. The prison backs off. When one of Vinny's oldest friends shows up to pay respects, his past comes back to haunt him. Obi O'Brien. Gina. His friend of 40 years didn't recognize him. He said, you know Hollywood? <laughs> you were just stuck to send in Valentine's. The three of us wouldn't be here today. <laughs> but no, you had to have friends. So right away, I perk up. What does he mean, Valentine's, sending Valentine's men? <sighs> oh, my hand. And he said, pal, I whack people for money. OK. Of course I didn't believe him. It's true. You got to believe me, OK? I even flew to different cities. Whoever hired me, whoever paid me the most, I went. I did it. Could the love of her life really have been a cold-blooded killer all along? I said, you're telling me this, so I'll hate you. So God forbid if you do die, because he kept saying, I'm dying. It was very emotional, you can imagine. On April 20th, 1986, just hours after his confession. Yeah. He's gone, he's gone. I'm sorry. Vinnie Lynch dies. <laughs> he had written down wishes and spoke all the time. I want to be cremated. I want you to throw my ashes in Sheepshead Bay by Lundy's restaurant. But after years of being separated from the man she loves, Gina doesn't have the heart to follow through. Instead, she decides to keep Vinny close. They said, where's Vin? I said, he's in the trunk of my car, which was where I kept the urn. Where else would you keep a gangster? 